Hi everyone, nice to see you again. Welcome back to Pacific Front Channel. As you already know, I'm currently in Berlin, Germany. And today, I'm visiting the Military History Museum in Berlin Gato. What do they have in this facility? Let's find out! Located at the former British military airfield post-World War II and become a hub for air bridge operation during the Berlin blockade in 1948 and 1949, the Military History Museum of the Bundeswehr in Berlin Gato Airfield is home for dozens of military aircraft, helicopters, radars, and air defense systems of the past. To get here, you can take trains from the city center followed by a bus ride and then take a 10-minute walk to the Gato Airfield. The museum is open from Tuesday to Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and it's free. On the open-air airfield, you will see fighters, bombers, and air defense systems on static display. Meanwhile, Hangar 3 and the tower building showcase the history of aerial warfare in Germany since 1884 and the history of Gato Airfield respectively. I started my visit to the air defense section at the right side of the entrance. Here, you will see the Patriot, Hawk, and Roland air defense system, along with other equipment like AA guns, radars, and command vehicles. As we already know, the Patriot is one of the most advanced surface-to-air and anti-ballistic missile systems in operation today. It can engage targets from a distance of 68 km and can intercept up to 5 targets simultaneously. The Patriot has been in service in the German Air Force since 1989, and in this museum, it is installed in a CAT AI-1 7-ton truck. Beside it is the Roland Air Defense System co-developed by Franco-German Consortium. The development of the SAM system itself began in 1963 to meet the French and German requirement for a low-level mobile air defense system to protect field formation and fixed positions such as airfield. More than 400 Roland fire units have been produced since it entered service in 1977 for France, Germany, the US, and several other countries, and it has been installed in both track and wheel platform. The Roland system in this museum in particular is fitted into a CAT 4x4 truck. Another air defense system on display in this museum is the Hawk air defense system. Not gonna lie, looking at missiles in the open like this always gives me a sci-fi vibes. During the Cold War, the Hawk was one of the most important systems for NATO ground-based air defense. And during this era, the West German Air Force, together with units from the Netherlands, Belgium, France, and the US, formed a tight defensive belt parallel to the inner German border. The MIM-23 Hawk served with the West German Air Force and later unified Germany from 1961 to 2006. Dozens meters from the air defense section is the target towing aircraft section. In the past, when target drone development was not as advanced and cheap as today, the military around the world relied on towing aircraft to tow an aerial object with 2,000 meter cables as a practice target for air-to-air -air or ground-to-air combat. In Gato, they display target towing aircraft from both the West and East German Air Force. Two aircraft that amazed me the most were the Bronco and L-28 Beagle. Both have been converted from their original roles into a target towing aircraft for their respective country. In this area, there's an ASW Section 2 where you can see the Brigade Atlantic ASW aircraft and the Hawker Seahawk MK4 on display. The Seahawk on display was a former Royal Navy aircraft operated from the British carriers. Starting in 1958, the German Navy acquired 68 aircraft as a fighter interceptor, fighter bomber, and MPA aircraft and it was able to assist the ferry genet on ASW missions to some extent. 18 Seahawks of the German Navy were lost in accidents with 10 fatalities, and when it was decommissioned, 28 Seahawks were sold to India and participated in the Third Indian-Pakistani War in 1971. The left side of the entrance is probably more interesting for the general public, because you can directly see a row of jet aircraft both from West and East Germany being parked here. The first one you will see is the RF-4E Phantom, the reconnaissance variant of the F-4. The RF-4E was modified with a side-looking airborne radar or SLAR and used for recon missions in the inner German border to detect military movement in East Germany. 
between 1978 and 1982, the German Air Force upgraded the unarmed RF-4E to be able to carry weapons in order to be used for cast mission. The aircraft on display with ID number 3562 was operated for a short period by the reconnaissance wing 51 and then the reconnaissance wing 52 prior to being turned over to the Air Force School of Engineering 3 where it served for 30 years as a ground training aircraft to train future aircraft mechanics. One of the most eye-catching planes in this museum is probably the Su-22. It served in the East German Air Force between 1984 to 1990. The aircraft on display was in service at Naval Pilot Squadron 28, a so-called Red 798. And in 1990, the aircraft received a specialized flight coating with the colors of the state of Mecklenburg for Pomen, blue, yellow, and red. Another cool Soviet-era aircraft park here is the MiG-23 Flogger with its iconic variable geometry wing, also known as sweep wing design. The aircraft that is shown here is the MiG-23UB twin-seat combat trainer version that was still usable as a fighter. It served with the Fighter Bomber Wing 37 of the East German Air Force from 1978 to 1990. Aircraft from the French Air Force are also on display in this museum with the presence of the Mirage 3E. It's a fighter aircraft capable as a long-range bomber, low-level strike, and as a tactical nuke delivery aircraft. About 520 Mirage 3E were produced in total, and the aircraft on display was assigned to Squadron 113 Artoa. Continuing my visit, I entered the indoor exhibition at Hangar 3. Inside, they showcased the history of German aviation from the late 19th century until the modern era. From hot air balloons, the Zeppelin, and paper planes, to World War II and Cold War era planes are on display, either in miniatures or the real ones. My favorites are the Tornado and the MiG-29. Since its first delivery in 1979, about 247 Tornado have been delivered to the German Air Force, conducting missions in Bosnia, Kosovo, and Afghanistan. Although the current number of Tornado has been reduced and replaced by more modern aircraft like the Typhoon and the F-35, the aircraft is expected to remain in service until 2025. Well, for the MiG-29, it was part of the East German Air Force until German reunification. In addition to several BMPs, a total of 24 MiGs were taken over from the East. As the only NATO member who owned Soviet jets before the eastward enlargement of the alliance, the German MiGs served as a sparring partner for other NATO fighters. In the end, 22 aircraft were delivered to the Polish Air Force at a symbolic price of 1 euro, one crash in 1996, and the last MiG with ID number 2903 moved to Gato. Sadly, I came too late to the museum, so I didn't manage to see other parts of the hangar and the tower building. I arrived there at 3 p.m., so I must have a good 3 hours to explore the entire facility. But somehow, time moves much faster there for some reason. And before I realized it, the staff told me they were closing. Gonna plan another visit the next time I'm in Berlin for sure. There you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.